The name Ian Burke is synonymous to the Atlanta music scene from the 90s until now. Artists such as Arrested Development, Outkast, Criss Cross, Escape, and TLC, to name a few, have worked with Ian in some capacity. Known as the Dreamweaver, Ian has the knack for finding and developing artists for music and film careers. On this episode of God Dreamers, guest host Sierra chats with Ian about his career, passion, and purpose. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for another episode of God Dreamers where we celebrate God-given purposes. Today we have the one and only Ian Burke where we'll celebrate his accomplishments and talk about his life. Ian, mm-hmm. thank you for yay! Thank you for joining us today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Thank Good. You. Thank you for being here. I'm going to start with a small short icebreaker. Um, it's a psychology test that people have done in the past. I hope you're open to it. Uh, (laughs) It's three basic questions. Three basic questions. Yes. Psychology. Yes. Okay. The first one is, what is your favorite color and why? The why is important. I'll explain why later. um, Purple is probably my favorite color and because to me it represents royalty. Okay. That's a good answer. And the reason why behind it, what psychologists have said, is that's the way we view ourselves. Mm. So do you view yourself as royalty? (laughs) <laughs> no, I don't. I, no. I leave that for others to decide. Okay, gotcha. The second question is, what is your favorite animal and why? Oh. Uh. Remember three basic questions. Three basic Easy questions. Easy question. My, I, it's a mammal. Um, the dolphin is. Okay. My and because of the intelligence. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. That's a good answer. So fa- the reason why is what you look for in a significant other. Well, there it is. That's what you look for? That's Have you found a dolphin? No. No? Okay. <laughs> uh, a bunch of whales. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <I'm just> <laughs> gotcha. And the last question is, what is your favorite aspect of nature and why? Aspect? Like, uh... It can be trees, the ocean, the stars, mountains, anything. Uh, I, and you know, I, I would stick with the 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 water, oceans, water, because it's mysterious, mm-hmm. the mystery. Gotcha. And in, in all the rivers, oceans, yeah. lakes, ponds, creeks. So the reason behind that question, the nature aspect, is how you view God. Do you think that's true? That there's a mystery. There is mystery. There. Yeah. Surrounding God. Uh-huh. I I believe that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. I believe that people, you know. Look at it. Look at it differently, mm-hmm. and look at look at that differently. Mm. And yeah. Cool. I'm gonna shift gears a little bit. Okay. I want to talk about your nickname, Dreamweaver. Ah. I could piece together what I think it is, but okay. w- could you explain where you got that no, name? No, I want to hear where you, where you well, piece together. I think it's like you um, hearing someone's vision, hearing mm. someone's dream, and creating a path or a way for them to be able to accomplish that. See. Is it? Right, it's that simple. Okay. So it's that simple. Who gave you that name? I gave it to myself. Oh, okay. And I did because, you know, because I get qu- asked that question a lot. Uh. Like, what, do, what do you do? Mm-hmm. And my thing is I, I try to help people's dreams come true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Love so, that. Yeah. Yeah. So is there a mentor that you had in your life growing up that kind of made your dr- weave your dreams for you? Um, my father okay. was definitely uh, my primary mentor because he was a musician. He put mm-hmm. the love of music in my heart. And um, so he would be the main one. And then, you know, um, I, although I've, I've met this man, but, you know, he's he wasn't really a mentor. He was a, a, a mentor from a, from a distance, uh, and that was Barry Gordy. Okay. And what he was able to do and... Detroit in the 50s and the 60s and 70s and beyond um, and the dreams he was able to make come true for people mm. so gotcha. those so, two people got, so back to your father as far as like was there a specific genre that he listened to more of music oh yeah jazz okay um he loved jazz um and uh old school 
style music, mm -hmm. you know, like Fats Waller, Fats Domino, Chet Atkins, um, anything guitar and piano based was uh, was his thing. Do you play any instruments? No, okay. I, I tried, but it didn't keep. I didn't. Okay. I don't have the patience for it. Okay, <laughs> got it. I, you know, I tried so many different instruments, but mm -hmm. no, it didn't. It didn't keep. Okay, so I read an article about you creating a path for newcomers in the music industry. Um, what um, is that isolated to Atlanta, or are you, is this mission broad to other cities and states? Well, I, I live here in Atlanta, so most of the work that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, has come out of Atlanta. Got it. So. Okay. And in that same article, you talked about Atlanta just felt like home when you moved here from New York in the 80s. Yes. So as far as um, Atlanta feeling like home, what was it that made you feel at home in Atlanta? Um, that I was able to grow in the city. The, the city and I grew together. Mm -hmm. You know, I moved here when I was uh, 18, going on 19 years old. And, um, you know, I couldn't see this, me calling any other place home at this point. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I've, I've often said that, uh, you know, New York uh, raised me, but Atlanta made me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I grew with the city, like the buildings and the infrastructure, the music business, everything took place and took hold in, in the 80s when I was, uh, when I began my journey here. So mm -hmm. that's why it feels like home for yeah. me. Do you think the career that you've had, you would have been able to build in any other city? Or no. Why is that? Because um, the things that were afforded to me here, you know, even though from New York, um, I went to school with the likes of Al B. Shore, uh, Heavy D, um, Pete Rock, CL Smooth, even P. Diddy's from Mount Vernon. Nice. Um, but you know, opportunities. I didn't see those foresee those opportunities being afforded to me in the small town of Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. So I left. Um, the opportunities here came in pieces, bits and pieces. It's like you would meet somebody. I would meet somebody, and their career would take off, and uh, it would help elevate my career because of their ascension, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't think that I would have gotten that anywhere else. Yeah, I often hear people talk about Atlanta being like a new Hollywood or a mini Hollywood or something in that, to that nature. Do you think that ha that type of effect Atlanta had on the music industry? Well, yeah, well, it, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like it, it was, it wasn't new. Like the music industry has always been here. Right. Like Isaac okay. Hayes was here. Um, uh, was my Curtis Mayfield was here, mm -hmm. you know. We had uh, Midnight Star, was here. Mother's Finest. The music was always here. It just became more defined in the '90s when the Face moved here, mm -hmm. and uh, Jermaine Dupree and Dallas Austin and Organized Noise carved out niches for themselves uh, in the Atlanta music scene infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You have a great memory. I would have forgotten half of those things. <laughs> you know, you know what? I'm struggling. I'm just want to make sure. You know, I'm like. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So um, you have many jobs, careers at this time, like CEO, a music producer, film producer. What does that work-life balance look like for you? Do you t have a rest day? What does that look like? <sighs> it 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 doesn't look like anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. I, you know, I'm I'm constantly on the run, mm -hmm. and then when I do get uh, a time to get a break for myself, I run late for other things that I'm supposed to be at and dress a certain kind of way. So uh, I fall behind on things all the time. Gotcha. You know, so there's no typical work day. It's, no planned vacations coming up. Well, yeah. Okay. See, my birthday's coming up, so I am planning on going to Hawaii. Okay, nice. Spend some time. I'm um, gonna go to Miami next week. Go see the TLC show. Okay. So yeah, so I I do have some, but those are probably gonna be the only times. Happy uh, early birthday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you want to share how old you're turning with us? Fifty six. Nice. It's a good number. I I, I think so. <laughs> awesome. So what about like in the morning? Do you have a certain ritual that you go through to help you get through your day? 
like I like to go to work out or listen to a certain type of music. What about you? I take my medication. <laughs> That's my routine. Okay. I, I line up my pills and, like, take my pills and make sure that, you know, like, I try to get them in. That's my, that's okay. my, honestly, that's my morning routine. Have you ever skipped a day? I skipped today. And, and how's today going? Today's great. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Today's great. I try not to have too many todays. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, um, I try to stay on task okay. with my ritual. Gotcha. Awesome. So, um, one thing that I love about life is that we can have an opportunity to continue to learn something new. Mm -hmm. And you are in a point in life where you're learning new things about film, film production, correct? Yes. So what are some challenges or something new that you've been learning that's different than music production? Um, it, it takes time, you know. Um, it's not that much different from the music business, but you know, I, I, I thought that it would be different from the music business a, mm -hmm. a bit, but you know, it, things things take time. Quality takes right. time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's about it. Okay. But for me, it's it was uh, a s sort of seamless transition from music into film and television for me as a producer. Um, because it's just about connecting the dots mm -hmm. and being able to make certain things happen. Gotcha. You know, and I'm, I'm pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. You mentioned quality, and one thing I was going to bring up a little bit later, but you also, you have a goal of focusing, well, focusing your goals on making music quality versus song quantity. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense of what I'm yeah, trying to say? Yeah, it does. So what do you think about the music the mainstream music today do you think it's more quality or quantity i think it's more quantity mm. you know people are just putting records together and quick and throwing it out mm -hmm. yeah i don't think people are taking their time anymore yeah i once read somewhere that um oh god i can't think of the gentleman's name but the the gentleman who wrote rock with you for michael jackson mm -hmm. like it took him two weeks to to do that record two weeks to record that record now these people are in here and they're jumping up and down because they can record a whole album in a day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, huh. yeah, but is it quality? Is it something that's going to last forever? I know when I hear that drum loop, that drum pattern at the beginning of Rock With You, that'll last me till I'm yeah. dead and in the grave. Um, you know what I'm saying? In my mind now. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. So that's quality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But how many of these songs that are released today uh, will you be remembered 10 years from now? That's true. 20 years Great from now. Point. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I'm, I'm for a quality over quantity when it comes to that. Yeah. What has the music industry looked like during the pandemic? What are some challenges that people have faced, or has there been any challenges? Yeah, I mean, you can't perform. There's no performing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, wow, well, the pandemic was... That, that was a huge situation, but that was... A necessary situation for me because it gave me the time to mm. sit back and think about what I wanted to do for the second season of my life mm -hmm. and how I wanted to get it done. Mm. So much needed sit down and look at the four walls around you and uh, decide what you're going to do from this point on. Is that when you made your decision about yes. film production? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm taking it more seriously, yes. Right. 